Welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger. The title of this video is How to Thrive After Trauma, How to Heal from Your Childhood Trauma. And if you stick around, I will give you two very useful tidbits that will help you do that. Now, the big announcement I have that I am thrilled about is that I am launching my one-on-one -on -one coaching program called Thriving After Trauma. I'm launching this because I've heard from a lot of you either in the comments below or via email asking me if I have courses or coaching available. Well, now I do. So this program is going to consist of one-on-one -on -one individualized sessions with me in addition to online on-demand content. Further down the line, I'm going to be offering an on-demand option, like an only on-demand option, if that's better suited to you. But for now, I'm opening up five slots to my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, where you get one-on-one -on -one sessions with me in addition to the on-demand content. You can go at your own pace, you can do any time. So the big reason I'm launching this program in addition to you guys asking me for it is because I hear a lot from different people in different organizations that we should reparent ourselves from our childhood trauma. We should unlearn the negative ways in which we were conditioned as kids. We should heal generational trauma. We should work on healing our triggers. But I rarely see anything about exactly how to do that, like step by step, exactly how to do all that. Because it's hard work. And if you're parent, a parent already, you're doing this on top of your job, on top of your parenting, on top of managing your kids. It's a lot. So the program is geared toward giving you precise steps on how to do that. Remember, I'm a Gemini, I like to parse language. So part of what this program provides is scripts for conversations with your partner, with your friends, with your kids. For example, when your boundaries are tested, what to say, what's healthy to say, what's not healthy to say, things like that. So it's really gonna help you work on your triggers and work on your relationships and work on your own boundaries. And this is ultimately going to lead to a more fulfilling life, right? And that's what we all want. And that's my goal, to help you guys be happy and live happy, fulfilling lives. So there is a link in the video description where you can book a call with me to talk about the program and to see if it's a good fit for you. So to make sure that you're ready for it, that you're in the place for it, happy to talk with you guys. Just book any time on my calendar, we can chat about it. And you can ask me any questions you have. I am deep into the preparing the content for it right now and I'm really, really excited. So I promised you two tidbits of information and this is kind of representative of what the Thriving After Trauma program is going to help you with. One is this, those of us who have suffered childhood trauma, childhood abuse, by and large, you'll find that the legacy of the trauma, doesn't matter the form the trauma took too much, but the legacy of it is very similar. That's why, if, for example, if you were a child who suffered maybe narcissistic abuse or psychological or emotional trauma, sometimes you'll hear therapists and other experts say that it's you know a good idea to go to, for example, Al-Anon programs. And you may think, well, my parents were not alcoholics, but the thing is the trauma that children suffer, whatever the form, tends to have a very similar legacy. That means the adult children tend to act out in very similar ways, whether your parents were alcoholics or addicts or narcissists or just not emotionally available. A lot of us have kind of these triggers and ways of negative conditioning that are very similar. And one of those ways of negative conditioning is adult children who suffered abuse um, have this tendency to want to control their environment and the people around them. It's this need for control because we did not have control over our world and ourselves when we were kids. We were at the mercy and whims of parents and sometimes we had unstable households and that can result in this need for excessive control. And this is where, this is where codependency comes in, right? This is a part of being codependent and many of us who'd suffered childhood trauma became codependent adults. So I include myself in that category. So this is ultimately makes for an unfulfilling life because if you feel like you have to control not only yourself, but everyone around you, your kids, your partner, your household, control the events, control schedules, you're gonna be exhausted and you're gonna be burned out and you're gonna be just, you're not gonna enjoy life, okay? So, and the other thing is you really cannot control other people, at least not all the time. You may be able to exhibit some control over their kids over your kids when they're young, but as they get older, if you have older kids, you know this, kids are separate 
entities. They're not, they're not like an extension of you. They're not just going to do what you say all the time. Like you want to, you know, you know, raise a glass of water to your mouth and your brain is telling, basically sending the signal to your arm to do it. A lot of parents I find think that that's how kids should operate. Like you, they tell them what to do and they'll just do it automatically. Like you raise your arm automatically without thinking about it, or you blink without thinking about it. That's not how the parent child relationship works, at least not in a healthy way. But to my point, a lot of us want to exhibit this control over ourselves and over our kids. And that can really lead to issues in the parent child relationship when the kids become developmentally independent as is normal. So I've devised a quick test where you can stop yourself and test yourself to see if you are being too controlling. And this will work with your partner. This will work with your kids, maybe with your close friends and family members. Let's say you want your kid to do something right now. It has to be right now. And your kid is resistant to it. They may say, well, can I wait until after my favorite program? Can I wait until this? Can I do it later? I'm tired. And you may think, no, I want it done now. I want this done now. So I want you to stop if you're getting resistance like that and it's just kind of becoming this situation where it's getting out of proportion. I want you to stop and ask yourself silently, why do I want my kid to do this now? Or why do I want my husband to do this now? Or my wife or my partner to do this now? If the only reason you can come up with is because you want them to do it now. That's being too controlling. If there's a good reason for it, well, you have to brush your teeth now before bed because germs and gingivitis and all these things, that's a great reason. Yes, absolutely. Okay. If you want to, you know, clean up these dishes now because they've been sitting here for a week. Yeah. Okay. I can get that. They've been here for a week. They really need to be done in the next hour. Fine. But if the only reason you can come up with is because you want it done right now, that's being too controlling, okay? And a lot of us have problems or issues or confusion in determining whether or not we're being too controlling because we had very poor parental and relationship role models. So this is gonna help you at least stop, detach and ask yourself. And many times, I use this all the time, and many times I'll automatically relax because I'll think, okay, there's really no reason this needs to be done now other than I want it done now. That's too controlling. I'm going to let this go for now, not forever necessarily, but for now. And I relax and that helps me and it puts me in a better mental headspace. So try that, see how that works. The next thing I'm going to share with you is a language oriented thing, which Gemini's are um, very precise at using and parsing language. So this is very helpful. But full disclosure, I actually got this tip from my therapist, so I can't uh, take credit for it. However, when you're talking with your kids, your partner, those closest to you, do not use the word but, B-U-T. Do not use the word but. For example, do not say, I love you, but I hate how you uh, load the dishwasher. I love you, but you could have done a better job. Or that's great, you got a good grade, but you could have gotten better, okay? Here's the reason why you should not use but. Because the listener only hears and processes and internalizes the phrase after the but. Because when the listener hears the term but, they know instinctually that the phrase that is coming after the but is in opposition or contradiction or is inconsistent to the phrase preceding the but. I love you, but now you instinctually know I'm going to hear a phrase that is not consistent with I love you. You did a good job, but now I'm, I'm going to hear a phrase that's inconsistent or in opposition to the fact that I did a good job, okay? And the person is going to focus on the phrase after the but, the negative phrase. And they're not going to remember the phrase before the but. So instead of but, use and. I love you and I have a little bit of an issue with how you load the dishes. Here's why. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I would not use the word hate in that um, in that. Uh, situation, by the way, that is an actual example from my household because my husband has ADHD and he's particular about certain things. Okay, that I'm not particular about. So, um, like the dishes. So, if, for example, if you're telling your kid, you did a good job, but say you did a good job and you, there may be something you want to communicate, although I would, as you will find out from um, uh, this program, I would really hesitate on 
giving any criticism to your kid when they come to you to make a bid for connection and they're communicating to you, including showing you work that they're proud of doing. But if there is something, see, I did it. And if there is something that you want to communicate to them, you can say you did a good job and X, Y, Z. Or, hey, I, I know this is a good grade and you don't seem as pleased with this grade. You seem like you are disappointed in this grade or you should have done better. And I'm sure you will next time. Boom. That's something that you can say that validates their emotional state, but does not offer criticism, right? So try that. Just substitute the word and instead of but. Start with doing that and then start with the phrase that comes after the and. If it's too critical, we could work on the verbiage and the scripting of it, okay? But these are the things I'm going to talk about in the program. So you, as you can see, we get really down into the details, the nitty gritty of this. This is not just a high flown, you need to heal your, your, from your childhood trauma, which yes, that's a true statement you do, but a lot of people need help in how to do that. And that's what this coaching program is about. And I'm very excited to share this with you. Again, you can click on the link down below in the description of this video to book a call with me to see if the program will be right for you and to ask me any questions. If you have any additional questions, you can comment them below. If you want to email me directly, you can email me at maria at lawschoolheretic.com. And my email address is down below too. And I'm very excited to talk to you guys soon. All right, take care.